thank you very much for joining us again on the Voice of Doubt Seekers. If you want to know more about the show, you can go to iTunes and subscribe to it so you can get it automatically in your phone or on your desktop. You can also go to the Voice of Job Seekers.com and uh, um, look for the show notes there as we discuss uh, Dr. Beverly Langford's new book, The Etiquette Edge Modern Manners. For business success, let me give you a little bit of information about Beverly. Uh, she's the president of LA, MA Communication, a training coaching consulting firm that specializes in strategic communication and interpersonal effectiveness. She also teaches at the Robinson College of Business at Georgia State University and lives in Atlanta. She's also been quoted in Forbes and New York Times. I want to welcome to the show Dr. Beverly Lankford. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you very much. And, and it's just Beverly. Okay. Well, <laughs> Beverly, <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, Beverly, the, uh, your book um, is something that's really needed when we're talking about networking. And I think everybody should have a copy of it if you're a little tentative about it. But I think, too, that uh, those of us who have been on the networking scene for a while, who are trying to build a career, who are trying to build businesses, is not just something that you're going to do uh, to just plug into one opportunity. It's going to be something that's going to be a pattern of your life and kind of uh, etched in the uh, in your, any strategy that you're trying to do to advance your career. Do you agree? I agree. And and I also think that that networking is is building more than just a, a, a connecting with someone who may be helpful to you down the way. Uh, it's also extremely important that you are a go-to person, that you're someone in your network who other people can call on as well. Right. Uh, I think it's been said on the show many times, and I know I've said it um, in many other spaces, that you're going to probably give five or six times as much as that you're going to get. And I think that's really the way the universe should work, and probably even more than that. I agree with it. And and you also, it's not just a, a physical network or when you're looking for a job. It's also a knowledge network so that when you have a project or something you need to do, you know who knows and you can connect with those people. And if you've done something for them in the past, then they're going to they're gonna be hard pressed not to do something for you when you ask for their help. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and again, uh, the first objective is to be outward focused, not so much inward as far as what what you need, but outward as far as meeting the needs and and that the that the connection is real and genuine. Nobody just wants to uh, connect because you want something or because they want something. Right, and, and I'm a big believer in, in giving before you receive. If, Absolutely. If you, know, if you know that you're going to, even if you know down the line that, that somebody may be helpful to you, find ways to be helpful to that person before you have to go and ask for anything for them from them. Absolutely, and uh, talking about one of your chapters, uh, Refuse to Schmooze and You Lose. Um, as I was sharing before, I think in the first half of my career, I don't think I got what it really meant uh, up until probably a few years ago. I mean, you kind of plugged into schmoozing, if you will, uh, because you kind of have to, because you know eventually that there's going to be some kind of need. But really, it, it is something that is essential, even if you don't have any favors to use up. Correct. Correct. And it just, it's a way, uh, it, uh, I, I really, the, the term schmoozing, I did a little research on it, and, and I, it, it really means that you, you make connections that are mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, I, th I think the word has become something that we think of as being a little phony, you know, oh, well, she's just schmoozing as though it's not genuine. But that's not the original meaning of the word. The, the original meaning, I think, was that, that you made genuine connections and that you were mutually beneficial down the road. Yeah, I, I think there's something that um, it, it takes some time to getting used to. And if you can get onto it early, um, I think people who really understand that the earliest they possibly can, 
uh, will have longer term success because they understand that it is a, a strategy for your career arc, your trajectory, not particularly something that you've got to get right now. Exactly. It's you, you think of it as being long term and it goes on internally. One of the things I mentioned in the chapter, mm-hmm. if, if, if networking events really are not your thing, maybe we have to go to some of them. But you can also find other ways to network internally in your own office, in your own company, in uh, nonprofit organizations where you're volunteering your services. There are great ways to network uh, other than just going to a cocktail party where people hand out business cards and, and talk about uh, whether someone's hiring. Yeah. Um, somebody who's an introvert should get better at kind of filtering out some of the noise that uh, that they may hear about networking and doing network events and doing those things. Some people can connect with those things. And I know I don't mind, but I know I prefer a small group or the one-on-one or even online to where um, – is I could be much more focused than to be overwhelmed by crowds and noise and inundated with uh, all types of business cards, if you will. I, I agree with you. Uh, but, you know, introverts have a real advantage in that people who are introverts generally, and I know I'm generalizing here, mm-hmm. but they're, they're usually very good listeners. Yes. And, and if you are, and they, they also... Uh, uh, can process the information in a very effective way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you feel that you mo- may be a little bit more of an introvert, think about asking questions, asking questions and then listening carefully to the answers. People who are more outgoing love to talk about themselves. Absolutely. And, and, so, and so if you are an introvert, you can go into these networking situations with a mindset of being more on a fact-finding mission and finding out more about people that may be helpful to you down the road. Yeah, I found that a question that works for me is to really find out, well, how did you get started in your career? Or how did you get started getting gaining interest in this particular field of study? And people can go on forever about themselves. You're absolutely right. One question that I use a lot in in business networking is, how's your business? Uh, Whether you're working for a corporation or whether you're a small business owner or or maybe you're doing a startup, uh, people love to talk about that and they'll, they'll open up about their challenges as well as their successes. Right. Now, in reading the chapters that uh, I dug into, um, people are going to look at look at it kind of awkwardly. And I think I was able to dissect a little bit of what uh, uh, what the intention is. It's not that you have to do every single move exactly, but it's about what your what each move means and what it communicates. Did I kind of grasp uh, the generalization of that? That's right. And you have to figure out what works for you. You don't yes. want to... Um, I've, I don't recommend that anybody put him or herself in a situation where that person feels inauthentic you you you've got to be who you are and these things have to work within the context of your personality but it's also okay to put yourself to push yourself outside your comfort zone a little bit that's how we grow right absolutely um so in the smaller meetings if you will like if you're doing lunch or you're doing coffee with someone um i know there are several things what would you say would be like three things that are very crucial to remember um, I think that's an art that we kind of take for granted, that we meet for coffee, even if you bought the person coffee, but you don't know how to initiate that conversation or initiate getting enough intelligence, if you will, uh, to kind of help you, let's say, with a job search. Well, you can certainly start off by asking that person some questions. If you initiated the meeting then you should have a clear agenda in your mind. I don't mean that it has to be formal or stilted or stiff, Mm -hmm. but you need to go with a couple of objectives in your mind, what you would like to walk out of that meeting with. And it may be an informational interview. You may just want to find out a little bit how somebody got started in a company. Mm -hmm. What is the general uh, climate of that particular industry? 
And, and then certainly if you're looking for a job, there's nothing wrong with asking if the company is hiring and if they're, what are some of the things that you can do to put yourself into a good uh, situation or a good position to move forward. Even if the company's not hiring right now, what can you do down the road to, to, to be eligible for consideration? So I think knowing what, what you want to get out of the meeting is the first step. But also, you know, it, it ought to be a, a, a mutual learning experience. And so uh, the more that you can find out about that person and be able to understand what that person's needs are uh, so that you can be beneficial to them as well. Yeah. What, Go ahead. And what are they interested in? And mm-hmm. if you can find out there, uh, you know, it, it may be a little bit of, of you may feel that it's going too far and you have to decide that for yourself. But if you know they're particularly interested in something and you see online a, a great article on something that's of interest to them, uh, drop them an email or connect with them uh, through social media mm-hmm. and say, I saw this article that you might like. So it's stay, you stay on their radar that way. Yeah, and those are great points. I think it's essential, too, that what if you leave all your baggage at the door, so to speak, because I think what comes across many times is that people become so uh, so driven with some anxiety about it that they tend it tends to come across that way and people can sense that if you're desperate or you're just trying to get only information instead of of trying to build some kind of relationship uh people will be turned off by that well you you just hit on the on the key message right there Mm -hmm. it's it's the relationship yeah and every encounter one of the things my father taught me when i was growing up is that Every person you meet, you can learn something important from that person. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that if you open yourself to it, that, that you can gain something important and, and you would hope give something in return. So it's all about developing the relationships. You don't know when that relationship that you took a little time to develop is mm-hmm. going to come back and pay, and pay you dividends. Yes, and I think that people have to understand how important it is to be that kind of intentional and strategic in a meeting in meetings like that because that person could be a major part of uh, creating a pathway for you. At the same time, it may not be right then, right now. It could be even a year down the line. You've got to treat it as if that, that at some point you're going to be useful to them and, and possibly that they'll be useful to you. That's right. It's it's not a it's not just a one time event or occurrence. You're so right about that. Yes. Uh, are there anything else? Uh, is there anything else that you would like to add uh, before we wrap up today uh, about your book and what people will find uh, useful about it? Well, there there are a couple of things. One is even though the the title is the etiquette edge and it has some some things to do with just knowing how to behave appropriately. The main thing is it's about communication and how you interact with other people. And the book is written in a way that it, 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 you do not have to read it from end to end. Mm-hmm. You, were, you were interested, for example, in a couple of chapters. Right. And, and that's exactly how you can read it. You can look at the table of contents and say, oh, okay, I'd like to read the chapter on uh, how do you leave a job gracefully, for example. And you can read that and not read the chapters around it, or you can read the whole thing. So it's something that, that I hope speaks to people at a particular point of their need. And then later on, something else may be more relevant. Yeah, and I think that goes to how uh, I think most uh, people who write really good books are viewing their audience, that, that they're going to read it on an on-demand basis, not that they have to read and assimilate all this information right now. You can read it to where they're in bite-sized pieces. And I think that's where I get the most out of the information I've uh, been fortunate to to get and to give out is understand it. people like it in small bites as opposed to a whole big meal where it puts them to the sleep, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what I tried to do. 
So again, the book is The Etiquette Edge, Modern Manners for Business Success. And uh, how can people engage more information with, uh, uh, with you and want to know more about what you do, Beverly? Well, they can certainly go to my website, which is lmacommunication.com. And if, if uh, uh, anyone wants to know more a little bit about some of my offerings, that's the best place to go. Great. And you can buy the book online at, at, at the major online stores and probably at the brick and mortar as well. Great. And uh, AMA Com Books is another place so you can get the book. Uh, they've Correct. been partners with me now for the last five years, of which I've uh, presented many of their authors and their books. And you can go back to the past episodes to get a lot of that information. In the meantime, thank you, Beverly, for coming on the show. Well, I very much appreciate the opportunity. Thank sure, you. Sure. And for the rest of you, I want to thank you for joining us this week for a shorter edition of the show. And next week will be uh, will be a chock full of stuff as I have planned for you. In the meantime, thank you very much. If you want to know more information about The Voice of Job Seekers, just go to thevoiceofjobseekers.com. You can also leave a comment on the speak pipe button that's in red on the right side of the screen on site, or you can communicate with me. Call me at 708-365-9822. Um, there, there is a voicemail, and you can also text that a particular number, and I'll be glad to respond. I usually respond within 24 hours, so that'll be okay. You can also email me at mark at thevoiceofjobseekers.com. Thank you very much for joining us this week, and look forward to hearing uh, from you and you hearing from me next week. Thanks.